So now that we've explored additives and mediums and have actually gotten our hands dirty and played with them a bit, we are gonna talk about some techniques, specifically beginner techniques. What I love about this Pro Pack is that you have this resource available for you, acrylic painting techniques. Uh, there's, it's actually a two part. You have one you can explore with and you have one that you can uh, use as a resource for your students in the class to learn about them and to refer back to it. There is technique titles up here, the descriptions, uh, suggestions on how it can be used as well as painted examples. But instead of just referring to this, the best practice is actually getting in there and creating. And so that's what we're going to do right now. We also have this acrylic technique practice, which is similar to what we use with the gel mediums and additives page. And so this goes over washes, wet on wet, glazing and things like that. So what we're going to do is just explore a few of these. And uh, some of these could actually be considered advanced techniques. So we might look at that. Uh, here again, we might refer back to this. So what I like to do, I'm gonna pick out two different colors and I'm gonna go with a Prussian blue and um, I'm gonna go back to this green because I just like this green. So again, my palette, have some palette paper, some freezer paper and just a clipboard. Can also use cookie sheet trays and um, I just got all new dishes at the house, and so all of the kid dishes that we accumulate with Dora the Explorer and all those different characters, um, I bring those all to the studio, and kids can use them by just putting foil on top or palette paper, and we really cutting, we're really cutting down on having to constantly scrub plates and things like that. They just take the paper off, fold it up, and put it away. Um, so we're gonna start off with a little bit of this Prussian blue, and I'm gonna show you how to just do a wash. Basically, a wash is just a light, light coat of a little pigment in a decent amount of water. Look at that, that is such a beautiful color. Okay. And so with washes, these really serve as a great way to start off a painting. Kids get so overwhelmed with a brand new canvas or support that they don't know where to start. And a lot of times they just go in and start drawing their subject but I always encourage them to do some sort of wash in the background. You can get darker washes. Then you can also get very, very diluted watered down washes like that. And so what I would suggest when using this, one, tell the kids they don't have to stay inside the box perfectly. If they want to go outside of the box, they can. Two, also ask them to get some gradients. So if they wanted to do like an ombre effect where they start with a darker wash and get to a lighter wash, that works as well. So. Here next to it, we have what's a dry, it's called a dry brush. And so that's basically what it is. You're just going in without any water at all. And so you can kind of see, you can get some really interesting texture using a dry brush. The more paint that's being used ends up drying the brush out even more so. Uh, so here we talked about a wash and this is a graded wash. So that's actually there available for you. Uh, another thing kids like to use is the spatter. And I usually kind of water it down a little. And a lot of kids just like want to like violently thrust the paintbrush. Um, but an easy way to do it is just to flick. Makes less mess, gets the same result. And then we even talked about using a sponge. These are really affordable. I get these online and you can get them in like huge, huge packs. So this is watered down a little. So then I'm just gonna also use, this is just a traditional kitchen sponge. You get some interesting, and then I'm gonna actually try this more abrasive part. It's not exactly a sponge, but you do get some interesting texture with it. So these are just a few of the simple basic techniques. It's really good to teach your kids, starting off with the wash, the difference between the dry brush, mixing wet paint with wet paint, wet paint with dry paint, scumbling details. Um, you'll be able to go through all of these different things in your class and really give your kids an opportunity to explore all these different techniques that they can utilize in bigger pieces. So as you explain it, let them know that these are just parts of the puzzle and they can use whatever pieces they want to create their, their final piece. But any type of acrylic painting that uses more than just one technique is 
going to be visually more inspiring and visually more interesting to look at. And it's going to be a lot more fun to them uh, as painters and as artists when they have all of these different techniques and tools accessible to them. So now that we've gone over some basic acrylic techniques, we're going to dig further and look at some advanced techniques.